For years, we've been hearing car makers, politicians, and scientists talk about the prospect of using hydrogen to fuel our vehicles. After all, hydrogen is all around us. It's in the plants, it's in the water that we drink, and it's even in the air we breathe. But while it seems that the promise of hydrogen is always just five years away, hydrogen-powered vehicles are actually on the road right now, and other sectors are ramping up to use this clean fuel as well. So we felt it was time to take a snapshot of the hydrogen fuel landscape to see what's here now and what's coming just over the horizon. Hydrogen is the simplest element and most plentiful gas in the universe, but it's usually found in combination with other elements like in water. Separating it can be costly, but it's clean burning and can be produced from a number of readily available domestic resources including natural gas, ethanol, biomass, and water, all of which makes hydrogen a very attractive alternative to gasoline. Hydrogen fuel cells are the most promising technology for making power from hydrogen. Several car makers have demonstrated viable fuel cell electric vehicles and both GM and Honda are putting consumers behind the wheel in trial fleets right now. General Motors is confident enough in their fuel cell electric Equinox that they've placed 100 of them in service in New York, LA and Washington DC to see how they perform as daily drivers. This two and a half year long program called Project Driveway places prototype vehicles in the hands of regular drivers. Honda has begun leasing its FCX Clarity fuel cell vehicle to consumers in California. As customer demand and the hydrogen refueling infrastructure expands, Honda is prepared to expand that availability to other markets. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicles really offer a tremendous opportunity to take the vehicle out of the environmental equation, you know, zero carbon emissions, zero smog emissions, and, you know, zero dependence on oil. So we're on a pathway, you know, it's, uh, it'd be unfair to say that this is a technology that's here today ready to deploy, while at the same time, right behind me is a car that we are putting in the hands of customers. Hydrogen has been used for decades, but what's new is using hydrogen for the consumer. So having individual people instead of just large industries using hydrogen. Right now we have about 300 vehicles in the U.S. We also have 70 operational hydrogen fueling stations in North America. But we need the number of vehicles and stations to grow. And specifically, we need the fueling stations and the vehicles to grow together. The chicken and egg problem, where, where you've got no infrastructure and you've got no end users, using the product because both are waiting for the other to exist. Aside from fuel costs, the lack of a refueling infrastructure is perhaps the biggest hurdle to widespread use of hydrogen as a fuel. For one thing, developers are finding the station permitting process is being bogged down by a lack of knowledge. Many local officials have never dealt with hydrogen refueling before, so familiarizing them is key. And new stations like this one in Columbia, South Carolina are being built now with an eye towards future expansion. The, the station was laid out uh, with the foresight for expanding it over time. Right now they're relying on hydrogen being delivered by those large tube trailers that you see. Eventually they have provisions to add an electrolyzer so they can produce hydrogen on site from water. Uh, and then also there's utilities and uh, space arranged for an on-site natural gas reformer so they can produce uh, hydrogen from natural gas as well. Another great platform for the use of hydrogen fuel is with buses. Their size makes packaging of bulky components relatively easy. This bus was built in Golden, Colorado. It's going to be here in Columbia, South Carolina for a year for some testing and then it's going to be open for passengers to ride on uh, sometime between August and September. This is uh, all electric. It's got batteries underneath you, uh, right underneath the floor, and it's got two fuel cells in the back, which recharge the batteries on the roof, much like a um, compressed natural gas bus. You have hydrogen tanks that feed the fuel cells. Hydrogen fuel cells make sense in a number of off-road and stationary applications as well. And not surprisingly, the U.S. military is leading the way in their development. 
near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, a test fleet of hydrogen fuel cell powered forklifts run alongside their standard battery electric counterparts at the Defense Logistics Agency's massive Eastern Distribution Center. In this facility we have approximately 220 pieces of equipment, material handling equipment forklifts. Of that, 40 of them are hydrogen powered. Inside the building we have two dispensers. There's a very limited amount of hydrogen in the building at any given time. Most of the piping is run external to the building right up until the dispensers. Our fire department was very heavily involved in this. They went with us to different facilities to see and learn to make sure that we had a safe installation that was a prototype for the rest of the Department of Defense. So far it appears that these are making very good sense. The operators are key and they really like the fuel cells. It's pretty invisible to the operator and if the business case works out, I expect this to expand at the University of Maryland's Ballard Fuel Cell Lab, researchers are developing a fuel cell electric portable field generator that will derive its hydrogen from standard military diesel fuel. We're working here on an industrial government academic collaboration to develop uh, proton exchange membrane fuel cells for various applications. Our principal research area here is to develop the technology and the, the systems that are needed to enable these types of fuel cells to operate not only on hydrogen but on liquid fuels as well. The fuel cell system also offers advantages beyond just the efficiency. It's cleaner, the emissions are lower in terms of NOx, in terms of carbon monoxide, and, and also it's quieter. And from a military perspective or from even a, an application such as an RV, that's a, that's a big benefit. So to those who say hydrogen fueled vehicles are not ready for prime time, we say look again. While work continues in the areas of catalyst materials, cost effective hydrogen production and infrastructure development, the technology of fuel cells is rapidly advancing and the reality of a hydrogen highway is getting closer to our own driveways every day.